Today we're going to demonstrate the Brennecke Magnum Slug. This is a big, heavy beast of a slug, and this was generously donated to us by Alexei Lavrov of St. Petersburg, Russia. And of course, Brennecke is from Germany, and if you're in Germany, you probably pronounce it Brennecke. Now, I'm not sure how Alexei got them in Russia, but I'll tell you what, these slugs have really seen the world. Hello, this is Jeff of Tal Flatermouse. Yes, I'm out here by myself today. Uh, Greg wasn't able to make it. Uh, today, we've got uh, four rounds of these Brennecke uh, Magnum slugs. They're a very heavy slug, weighing in at about uh, just a little over 38 grams. Very heavy duty. Uh, this is like the second time we've ever shot Brennecke slugs. Um, the first time didn't go very well with the Special Forces slugs. Let's hope these do better. These are hand loads with 35 grains of Hodgkin's long shot in them. So let's see how they do. Let's see how my camera work does. First target is just uh, Lieutenant Doug <laughs> with a Kevlar vest on. Wow. Well, the Kevlar vest managed to catch the slug. It's buried very deeply inside there. I couldn't get it out, but look at that bulge. Mama would be proud. I was running the Kronos high-speed camera at 10,000 frames a second. Here it comes, and whammo! It just turned that Kevlar vest into a little ball. Uh, but look at uh, Doug as his whole body just reacts to that intense impact. Now, even though the Kevlar vest did a pretty good job of catching that slug, that blunt force would just cave in your chest. I don't think you survive the impact. Next we'll look at a different type of body armor, an AR-500 steel plate. shot this plate quite a few times and I've never seen a dent that big in an AR-500 plate from a shotgun slug. Not bad. And that wasn't a very bad shot at all. I hit that orange sticker. I can't believe it. Not bad for a stupid camera guy, huh? Now you probably noticed that when that bullet slammed against that plate it splattered on it actually and took a lot of the paint off with it. Now those lead fragments travel pretty much along the same plane as the surface of the plate and if they struck you they would actually harm you quite a bit. Alright next we have the head off of a German micro car. If you can name the car you get a special award. Let's see what a slug does to this. Hey, at least I hit the thing. I shot it a little bit high, but look at that slug. It buried itself in the front. It didn't go through the back. Now you've probably noticed when these slugs are flying through there, they're not very stable. They're waggling around a little bit. And, you know, I'll, I'll take some of the blame for bad aim, but I'll also blame the slug's design for not being as accurate as they should be. But we'll bring this head back out again. We'll punch through it with something. I've got some 308 armor piercing rounds that a guy named Randy sent me a couple years ago that will put some holes in this thing. Stay tuned. Last target is a Yeti insulated mug full of water with a big wooden block on it and a 25 pound lead plate to hold it down. Now this slug was really wonky, really waggling around, but at least I hit it. I'm just glad I hit it because that was the only chance I had. But that hydrostatic shock of that slug hitting that water-filled container ripped that thing apart. And surprisingly I didn't get showered with water 
And most importantly, my cameras didn't get showered with water. Now these slugs were traveling around 1400 feet per second. I probably could have pushed it harder, but the recoil on these was actually pretty harsh and I, I may have gotten a bruise. And I want to thank my brother for supplying this Yeti mug. I think he wanted me to shoot it. <laughs> but even though my shoulder was a little sore, I think this Yeti mug was just a bit more sore. That thing just unraveled that thing. That was awesome. As always, we appreciate reading your comments, replying to your comments, and thank you, Patreons, for keeping this channel alive.